Great to see you all. And uh, we've got quite a packed weekend for you as we have the past two years. We're doing it the third year in a row. I've got my Jack Benny Junior High School gear on. Um, so if uh, if it's legal in your state with the tie dye, you can go get some uh, edibles or whatever and <laughs> make it a really interesting weekend. And uh, let's see, actually, <clears throat> I had something. Let's let's uh, if it's all right with everybody else, let's start off with an unboxing video because I had something that came in the mail today. And so let's let's see, I gotta hold it up, don't I? Okay, so let's unbox this. Let's see see what we have. And we have, ooh, we have a little something in here. <laughs> I've never done one of these before, so I apologize if I'm doing a bad job of it. So now we have something here. And let's see what we have. Hopefully it's something Benny related that was kind of uh, the loudest, <laughs> like, you know, oh, look, Peter Lorre. <laughs> Only wrapped it well. Uh huh. And let's do classic Hollywood film and television. I don't know if that's in focus for everybody, but so let's see. It's a silver box. What's in the box? What's in the box? We'll find <laughs> What's out. What's in the box? <laughs> get the get the gif on here of uh, Ted Knight going. Well, we're waiting. Bag gone. I got my money's worth of this. Ooh, it's even in a bag. Stuben glass. All right. I don't know if this is what it originally came in, but let's see. And it is a silver box. And it is engraved on the top. And it says to Mary and Jack on their 20 wedding anniversary with I think that's written in Arabic um, <laughs> not really <laughs> uh, and much love from Jean and Alfred so I know that it's hard to read that on a uh, reflective surface so what's it, what's in the box let's find out there's nothing in the box there's ashes in the box. Hey, wait a minute. Is this part of a person? My hopes forget. and dreams were in the box? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. I've let them go now. Actually, uh, you know what? This looks... This, I'm, I'm, I'm open to other thoughts, but this looks like cedar to me. And I'm wondering if this was a cigarette box at some point. And that was to keep the, the cigarettes fresh. So anyhow... From, exactly from what it was used for, a cigarette box. Pardon? That's exactly what it was used for, a cigarette box. Oh, excellent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, let's, let's focus on uh, on Mike and Joanna. And uh, Maria, is uh, is Maria in the house right now? Yeah, she's audio only, I believe. Okay. Maria, say something. I don't have Maria okay. on here. And I think that um, Bobby said he's on, but he doesn't see anyone except Laura. He just texted oh. me. Gotcha. That's odd. Let me see if I can fix that. Okay. It's funny because I can't see him and the attendees. Maria, but... I have promoted you to panelist. Okay. Yes. Yeah, just some, uh, just a moment while we get some uh, technical details. 
Yep. And Maria, yep, you're good to unmute. Oh, um, Bobby's under Robert. Okay, there. You just had promoted me to panelist. I wasn't a panelist. All right, there we go. And I'm going to promote Bobby here, and I will allow him to speak. All right. And Robert, you're good whenever you're ready, sir. There we go. I hear, I hear you on. I, I'm on. Yeah, Wonderful. Woohoo! Ah, it works. It's in the house. Yeah, how about that? So, so yeah, since since we just had the unboxing of this, you, you confirmed it was for cigarettes. Thank you. Do you have any particularly mem particular memories of this or where it was kept or anything like that? No. I think no. we all have some silver boxes from cigarettes and cigars and, and whatnot. Yeah, there were a number, right? It, yeah, mom, mom had a number of like humidors that came from different sources. And I think we each have one or two, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's another silver box. Woo! <laughs> and it just says Jack Benny. Um, you can't see it because of the reflection. Yeah, sorry. I'm seeing myself in your silver box. I'm just impressed mm -hmm. that they're that you, both of yours are very nicely polished because mine are need to be polished. <laughs> yeah, I'd show my, my, my mine is downstairs in the living room where I where I'd, where I'd show it. I'll show it to y'all. And this one was given to Granddad by Lucky Strike. So on the inside, it's engraved from Lucky Street. Oh, I remember that one. That was in that was in the living room at Mom's house, right? I think so. Yeah, that's a, that sounds. Yeah, I remember that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's see. You know, actually, since I've got the Jack Benny Middle School uh, shirt on. I, I know that I have seen uh, at least a couple of you in Waukegan. I'm wondering, you know, have, have you all been to Waukegan? Have you all been to the school? I know your mother was a big fan of Waukegan, even though I met her there in 1987. And, um, you know, tell me what your, uh, your memories are, your connection to Waukegan, if you feel like you have any. I've never been to Waukegan, so... Okay. I've been to Waukegan once because I have a picture of myself in front of the Jack Benny statue, mm -hmm. um, but I have no memory. I, I mean, I, I was there in the it. picture with me. You were there. Yeah. Uh huh. I think I was there on the same trip, right? I think I I arrived maybe a day later though, so I missed out on the photo session at the statue. But I do remember going there one time, and I think it was that same trip because I think you all were there. I think I think I saw yeah. you there, Laura and jo Joanna. You were there. I don't remember about. Michael or Maria? I, I was there and yeah, it was for the unveiling of the statue. And right. I remember driving by the school and uh, seeing seeing the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing that I remember, actually, I think I was sitting next to Joanna towards the back when um, I've, I've forgotten his name, but the, the, the guy who used to do Granddad. Oh, oh Eddie um, Carroll. Eddie Carroll. Yeah, mm -hmm. Eddie Carroll. Um, was he did granddad at that unveiling and I completely lost it because that's right. it was so real that it was like he'd been reincarnated. I just completely lost my shit. He was he was the one that did that one man show, right? He was the one that yeah and and he came he came to the Boston area many years ago he came to the Boston yeah, area I was he was there. like Right in, I think Newburyport in the Newburyport something theater, and um, we all went. Right, Joanna, you and I went, and you took your kids. At that point, that was pre my kids, I think. Yep, but, I think it was just Ben and Brandon. Yep. Yeah, um, right. It was just the yeah, the two of us with Ben and Brandon, and we saw him do his show. That was mm -hmm. fun. That was really fun. Yep. He was. I mean, he he was delighted. He was. You know, he was. He was so happy to have us there, and uh, I think you brought him flowers and stuff. That was really cool. Yeah, and then we had um, like I don't remember if it was dinner or just a drink or something, but we we went with his wife Carolyn. I think was her name. Yeah, yeah Carol, uh, Carol. Yeah, Carol, <laughs> Carol, Carol, and Carol. Carol. Um, yeah, we went with her with them to some restaurant or something. Yeah, she stayed in touch for a while. I mean, she's super nice. I mean, they were they were both super nice, right? He's passed away, but she's super nice. And, and no, she's passed her. away too. She did. Yeah. Okay, that's recent then. More recent than at least. I see. Yeah, it was a few years ago. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, and actually, you you started to touch on it the, that 
um, Joanna and Bobby both have kids. So, you know, because we're getting like a few generations away from Jack, you know, what, who, who is he to them? Is, you know, is it something like, hey, let's listen to some of Granddad's shows? Or is he just like, you know, somebody back in the family tree kind of thing? Uh, uh, it's, you for start? me, yeah, I mean, it's a combination of both, I would say, you know, it's a little bit like, uh, like, they certainly know about him and they certainly know you know especially my two older kids ben and brandon who are um in their 30s now so mm -hmm. you know they um and they're very close with with mom and um you know you can't know mom without knowing you know it's just such an intrinsic part of of her yeah. so um yeah and my oldest son ben is of course named after him um mm -hmm. And my youngest daughter. So, you know, when I was um, before I had kids, I had, you know, determined that if I, when I have kids, my if I have a boy, it will be, uh, it will be Ben Benjamin, and if it's a girl, it will be Jacqueline, and that would be, you know, after Granddad. And mm -hmm. um, sure enough, I ended up with both. But I do remember <laughs> when Ben was born, you know, Bobby saying, "Hey, I was going to name my first my first kid <laughs> Benjamin." It's like, well, too bad I got to it first. But, uh, sure, it took you a while to get to Jacqueline, boy. That's yeah. I had to go for you know. I had to keep trying, but yeah. That, that was after mom, not not granddad. It was kind of a combination of both. Like all you know, the kids are all like you know for reasons. You know, the B is for Brad, Ben for granddad. Yeah, but um, mom. Um, I don't. Maybe one of you knows the story better than I do. But um, at some point after Miss Mary died, uh, mom found her adoption papers. And she found that before she was adopted, her name was Jacqueline. So, uh, you know, she had never gone by Jacqueline, but then that was like another uh, two reasons to name a daughter Jacqueline. Yeah. I had forgotten about that. You're right, though. Yeah, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think for my kids, you know, I, I've tried to or, or I've, you know, taken some effort to show them things, you know, so I've had them watch a few clips um, I had them watch one of the um, one of the specials. I forget which one of the the TV specials uh, after he had died. Um, and then more recently, I think it was about a year ago, I uh, had them watch um, "To Be or Not to Be" because mm -hmm. obviously it's, it's such a great movie, and I and I always loved that one actually. You know, even as a, as a kid, I remember really liking "To, to Be or Not to Be." And um, so I had them watch that, and I have to say, Nathan and Caleb, my two the two younger ones actually had trouble following it. They were they were kind of confused in terms of what's going on. Ryan, my oldest, who, um, you know, is interested in show business and really wants to be either actor, singer, dancer. I mean, he's into all these things. He loved it. He, he thought it was just brilliant. Um, and so that was, I think, the first time I ever saw one of my kids see their great granddad in some kind of performance and really, really, really get it and really, really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. now that was that was satisfying yeah he, he really thought that was a great movie well it is a great movie of course oh yeah <laughs> we agree um actually on the q a we have a, a couple um that have come up and uh if anybody in the audience has q a uh if you take a look down at the bottom of the zoom window you'll see a q a button you can type in your question there and do the great grandkids have any interest in pursuing an acting career? That's for you, Bobby. Yeah, oh, yeah. Ryan, my, my oldest Ryan is a freshman at, uh, at NYU Tisch School of the Arts. And his main interest, I would say, besides, I think he, he has some interest in writing, in writing songs and writing shows and writing musicals. Um, but I think he really mainly wants to be in front of the camera or in or on the stage. He he really likes singing, dancing, um, and acting, and and probably especially acting. Um, so uh, you know that's what he's you know that's his interest. That's what he's studying at, at Tisch. Um, he's auditioning. I think the the musical that NYU is doing or Tisch, the musical that Tisch is doing this coming semester is going to be Cabaret. Um, now he's a freshman, but he did just audition to, to get a, a part in, in Cabaret. Um, so we're all fingers crossed. Hope he, hope he does that. Um, and I did, by the way, once see him do a little comedy routine. Uh, this was when his other school that he was looking at was USC. And he got into the USC School of Drama we were visiting. 
and they had a day when it was just for the for the drama kids and they had us go to some um, sort of sample classes and we went to a um, a, a class on stand up comedy. And of course, all the parents sit in the back, you know, in fear that they might get called on to have to say something. And all the kids being theater kids are right up front, you know, call on me, call on me. And that was Ryan. And indeed, after the teacher explained a little bit about how the class works, she said, all right, anybody want to get up, you know, get up in front of the class and uh, and do a little bit of stand up. And they all, you know, all the kids were being, again, theater kids, they all raised their hands and, and Ryan got his turn. So he got up there and he, he did a little, I think, largely improvised, but there, there was definitely some of it that I know he had been thinking about in terms of a routine. Anyway, so he he actually did a stand up comedy routine, and uh, I, th I thought he was pretty good. It was fun. Yeah, he did. He did pretty much the whole routine for for me. Uh, it was it was very amusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so, you, so you've seen that routine, all right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So we'll see. You know, he, he and he and he's available for uh, any um any radio show oh, recreations. Uh, any of you. <laughs> You know, if anybody's doing a radio show recreation and you need a, a good voice, Ryan would love to do a, one of the voices. Okay. Well, you got a bunch <laughs> of them going on this weekend, so I'm sure somebody will take him on. So. He, he, he can do good voices, yeah. Okay. I, I've seen him, by the way, I've seen him do Granddad's Walk. He does, uh, he does Granddad's Walk very well. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, am, uh, I have a question that I, I don't know if it's appropriate to... If, if this is the correct uh, session within the weekend to ask this question, but one of the things that I came across uh, at mom's house going through her stuff was a, a record album, an interview. One side was with granddad. One side was with Bing Crosby. Oh yeah. Um, have you seen this, Laura? Are you aware yeah, of this? Yeah, you, you sent me a copy of it. No. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I learned more about him listening to this, you know, 20 minute interview about him professionally than I had been aware of. And one of the, one of my great regrets is that I had complete and total access to this genius, this, this person who was a standout, you know, one in a million type of uh, mind. And I didn't know it. You know, I just thought he was like this, this, uh, old guy who, you know, got on stage sometimes. And by the time I became aware of him professionally going to his, he was still doing uh, headlining in, you know, Reno and Vegas and stuff. And Michael and I would go with them uh, for a week and, you know, hang out with him and, and the co-stars and stuff. Um, but he already had his persona. He already had all the shtick. He already had the 39 and the miser and the, you know, all, all the stuff that became so rote that all he had to do is, is have somebody say an age or money, and then he would do a silence thing and he'd get a huge laugh. And I thought, well, where's the brilliance in that? So I, I really thought that he had he had sort of done his best work when he was young, gotten all of this, uh, you know, this shtick going. And then it was very, very easy after that to simply reference it and and have a show so my question so listening to this this record I, uh, and people were talking about how brilliant he was and and him talking about how he got into radio and he gave up a big contract in vaudeville because he saw the future of radio when other people didn't and i thought wait a second he actually did control his career he actually did have this brilliance and this vision and and so, and I regret that I didn't know that. I mean, how often in your life do you have access to somebody like Jack Benny and yet you don't learn anything from him? But you were a kid. 17, pardon? You were a kid. Like how, why would you know? Well, that's what I was going to say. You know, I was 17 when he died and it just didn't occur to me to ask those questions. Michael, on the other hand, was in college and he traveled with granddad. He, he went to, uh, Colorado Springs when granddad was doing a show there he went with him on Air Force Two to the moon launch and so I, I'm, I'm curious from the perspective of of those people who have studied him so Hope and Kathy and and Laura um if you can and Michael if you can explain to me who he really was professionally and how he became that. And 
Michael, since you're here, I, I'd like to kind of pick your brain on what it was like to actually see him not only, I mean, to me, he's either granddad or Jack Benny, and they're two different entities, right? Michael got to see him as both at the same time, simultaneously traveling with famous people going to a really you know, important event as a grandson, but also well, seeing granddad interact as a professional. It's, it's interesting because I never saw him both at the same time. When he was off stage, he was granddad. But as soon as he got started walking, he was in, he was old. He had his age, he you know, slouched a little bit, he, you know, he that posture. As soon as he got on stage, as soon as he started walking on stage, the music started playing. He so slowly became a new person. But by the time he actually got on stage, he was he was Jack Benny. He was young, he was thirty nine years old. His posture was great. He knew what was going on. And it was like a total, a total transformation between off stage and on stage. Very different. And I always appreciated that. Um, but to the to the fact of his being brilliant and. I didn't realize that either. As a kid, you know, he's my granddad. I don't didn't realize how smart he was. And it wasn't until just a few years ago when I think I was talking with someone and came across his notes and they were saying how you know, every comic pause of his was timed. He counted the seconds. He, they didn't come naturally. He actually counted the seconds for each one of those pauses. I didn't realize that. I thought it was just something that came natural. And that interview sort of brought all that home because they mentioned all that too, that everything was calculated. It wasn't just natural. He had every, everything was studied and calculated to make the audience laugh. And that's when I really sort of began to realize how wonderful he was. I know one thing growing up, I was, I was always upset that Lucille Ball show was got more attention than my grandfather's show. Everyone was, at least my generation, everyone was always watching Lucy's show and it was Lucy this and Lucy that. But, you know, the fact is, you know, my grandfather's show had almost twice as many episodes as the Lucy, all the Lucy shows combined. Almost 900 and something episodes and the Lucy shows had like 400 and something episodes combined. So it was on much longer, more episodes. And the show was very funny. I think it was just as funny as the Lucy show, the show ball show, whichever one you want to look at. Mm -hmm. um, but I was always said that my, my friends didn't see it that way. It didn't, it was, you know, he'd already passed his prime at that point. Mm -hmm. But what yeah. was it like to travel with him? What, what was it well, like to, to be at NASA and be on Air Force Two with was him? Just, was he granddad or was he Jack Benny? Well, he was granddad. Most of the time, um, for example, in that the, the launch of Apollo Eleven, he was not he was not very um, that science savvy or technical savvy. He didn't know really that much about science, and that's one of the reasons I think he brought me with him because I, I liked I was big into science. He met Dr. Werner von Braun, who was the founder of the Saturn V rocket. He didn't know who Dr. Werner von Braun was, I sort of had to explain it to him. And I thought that surprised me. I thought everyone knew who Dr. von Braun, Werner von Braun was. Um, but he did know all the, he did know all the names of all the generals, which I thought was interesting too. He knew all the generals that were there. I don't know how many they were there, but he seemed to know them all. Um, but when when he was with them, he he was still I think he was still granddad because he was I mean, granddad was the kind of person who laughed at anything someone said. He said the slightest thing, even if it wasn't funny, he'd just fall off his chair laughing. He'd laugh all the time. And the same thing was you know there. We, Dr. Von Braun would say something. My grandfather started laughing hysterically, and he was he was always laughing. Um, but he wasn't, he wasn't that he didn't do the pauses or, you know, the mannerisms that he does on stage of the walk was all studied for the stage. He didn't do those when he wasn't on stage. Um, yeah, it was interesting when he, when he was around all the other celebrities for that weekend, you know, lots of celebrities there. He wasn't, he didn't do the mannerisms. He was, he was granddad. He was just a regular ordinary person, very humble, but laughed a lot. Did you remember him laughing all the time? But you didn't see any brilliance. You just no, saw not, not, just a guy, not, no, no. just a guy with his peers. Yeah, yeah. During this case, sort of came before before the show. He would go through. He had a list he always kept with him in his pocket of what he was going to say on the show, and he would, he would go through that list before every show, and sometimes make changes and add to it or subtract from. It. And that's what he drew his, his what the show was from. You know, each, each show was a little bit different because the list changed for every show. And that's when I saw the brilliance when putting together that list. It, you know, I saw him even think about it and cross something out and think about it again and add something, think about it again. So finally, the list was ready and he was ready to go on stage. Without his writers. Without his writers, yes. This is just him. Wow. Okay. <laughs> does, does, I guess Hope's not on the panel, uh, or Kathy are not on the panel, so they can't really address that. There's Hope and there's Kathy. 
Oh, you're both muted. Go well, I, I'd say, Laura, I'd love for you to go first for, I mean, your ideas. You, you've been with, um, uh, you know, Jack, the cultural icon, Jack, the longest. I'm curious. As I said, I'm. Um, thank you. I'm so. We're so appreciating this conversation. Yeah. And I think he, he absolutely was a genius. And I, it just seems to me from researching in his archives that he didn't brag about it ever. You know, it was it was just quiet and what he did um, that, you know, so professional in that way. He didn't need to call attention to his brilliance, just seems to me. But I'd like to hear from Laura. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, credit where it's due. The person who actually said, you know, this radio thing, that could be that could be the next big thing. That was Miss <laughs> Mary. Um, because I that think was who? That, that was Miss Mary. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, because she apparently wow. I think if I remember correctly, you know, it's the asterisk on everything I say. Um, that they had gotten an apartment in on the Upper West Side, I think. And um, so she was able to stay home and was starting to listen to the radio more. And so she was the one who said to him, you know, you might want to you might want to think about getting onto the radio. Um, wow. Thing, you know, so and and, you know, it's funny, I had dinner with your mom one time and she had said to me, it's like, why did he always stay with her? What did he see in Miss Mary, you know? And I think there are certain aspects that she was there with particular input at the right time and that he knew how much he owed her, you know, how, uh, how much, you know, a role she had played in saying the right thing at the right time. And I think that plays a part of the devotion that that Jack had to to Mary. Um, so just I'll throw that out and feel free to to give your thoughts on it and hope uh, you as well. Well, I love I, I gotta say I, the, in reading, you know, Kathy's book, the um the stuff about about my grandmother I, it was really touching to me because it I think, Again, you know, we, we sort of arrive at it from a, such a different place where, you know, by the time we come around, you know, she's long since retired. Granddad's such, you know, such such a fully formed persona and his career is largely behind him at that point. And um, the path is not clear to us. And certainly in the case of of, of Mary, our grandmother, um, not even really an awareness. Of course, I knew she was on, was on, on the show, but um, there was, for me anyway, pretty much zero awareness of just how pioneering she was as a character on that program. Um, and it was very touching to read that in the book. And, and wow, talk about eye-opening, really, really eye-opening. Uh, and I think one of the reasons why he has, um, he was able to kind of, uh, with all of these transitions and everything, and even still today, he uh is able to kind of stay in um a consciousness because he's so kind to others he's not like he's it it's not just about him he often worked and promoted other comics and other people and so his kindness kept whenever like maybe he his career might have been waning um, a comic comes in that idolizes Jack and like Johnny Carson he, yeah like Johnny Carson he's suddenly back he's back in the mainstream so he never he never left because he was always he was always there for mm -hmm. everyone so you never know who's going to be the person that makes it but he was just there for everyone regardless of whether you know, I mean, of course, he wanted them all to succeed. I'm assuming the all the people that he promoted, um, but you never know who's going to be the next big thing. So, and I think he really, I think he, I think he knew that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I got I got a really nice uh, uh, Christmas card from um, Steve Martin's wife 
Um, and she waxed on at, at some length about how much Steve loved Jack and how much he loves his the, the, the money clip. I think some maybe a year or two ago when I was doing one of these, I think I told you all the story about um, getting a, getting one of the money clips for uh, as, as a gift from Steve Martin's wife to, to Steve. Um, anyway, she she really uh, she was really kind in, in this letter and, and talked about how much she just loves having that money clip. Mm -hmm. I'd like to answer, if possible, Steve Garland's question. Were the grandchildren old enough to be in the audience during Jack's filming of his TV series? And what are your memories of that? Well, no, I was definitely old enough because I was in the audience a lot, many of the episodes of the TV series, as well as the Lucille Ball show. But they, were, they were filmed, I think, well, I don't know if they were from the same studio, but they were, they were both going on at the same time. So I'd go from one to the other. And my memory, actually, my main memory was when he was a guest star on the Lucio Ball show. He had the big um, vault with the crocodile or all the special effects, special effects at that time. And my only memory is that watching TV shows being filmed is boring because <laughs> they, they make so many breaks and, you know, it's, it's not continuous and you have to change, set changes and lighting changes and stuff like that. So that was my major collection. Was that, was that the show where he uh, ends up in quicksand? Yes. I, I was there too, and yeah. my recollection is can't be accurate, but my recollection is that we were sort of going somewhere, and he's like, "Oh wait, I've got to stop by the studio and do this show with Lucy," and he was wearing. I remember he was wearing a blue suit, and he had to do this thing where he's walking across this walkway to get to the vault, and the the walkway descends into what is supposed to be quicksand, and it mm -hmm. ruins his suit. And I remember afterwards him being so angry because he was wearing a suit that he really liked and it was ruined, which kind of implied that he didn't actually know what he was going to be doing on the show. It's, it just seemed like, you know, we were sort of driving by. It's like, hey, uh, oh, yeah, I got to do this one thing. I'll, you know, let me just do this one errand and then we'll keep going. And, you know, the errand was being on the on the Lucy show. <laughs> it was, it was I didn't remember the quicksand not working. They had to do that a couple of times because the quicksand didn't work correctly. So that's uh, right, because the, the platform would go down and then stop, and they'd have to start it uh, over. I don't remember that. I just remember that it ruined his suit, and it, it just which made it feel so much more random that if he knew he was going to be, you know, ruining whatever he was wearing, you would have thought he would have prepared for that by wearing something that he didn't really like, which added to my sense that it, this was sort of this random weird occurrence that was, you know, like we were going somewhere else, and he just had to stop and do that. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's not true, but that's yeah, how it felt. I wonder if they were maybe like just shooting that particular scene or something like that. You no, know, they shot the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Interesting. Hey, Zach, I see you're on. Uh, you're on camera. Did you want to contribute something to the conversation? You're on mute. No, I was just popping in to show my face for a second. Just make sure everything's working on my end. You're good. <laughs> Very good. Uh, we have a whole bunch of questions here. Um, well, if I am if I am allowed to, I can address some of them in here in the Q and A if yeah, you'd like. You're, Wonderful. You're here, All right, I'll put these in here. All right. So um, Christy here wants to know what your favorite picture of Jack is. Um. I don't know if Christy means like an individual still photo or something or a picture that you guys might have from your memory, like that you have in your own photo book. My favorite photo is the one that was published in, I think my, my mother's book and my grandfather's book, maybe as a baby on the, on a bed with him playing the violin for me. Mm -hmm. That would be your favorite, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. This is my favorite. Oh, life magazine. Yeah. Uh huh. It's so, it's just so uncharacteristic. Like he's wearing suspenders. Yeah. I don't think I ever saw him wear a suspenders and he just looks sort of caught. He, he's just smiling. It's just, mm -hmm. it's so, this is granddad. This is not Jack Benny. This is granddad. And, oh. and that's why I like this one so much. Yeah. He wore suspenders and garter belts. <laughs> oh. he, wore garter, garter, he did garter wear garter, garter belts. I remember the garter belts, yes. You're right. I don't think they're called garter belts. I think they're like the sock holder upper thing. They're, they're sock garters. Yeah. Garters. <laughs> well, for me, of course, it's the the one. We with could buy Mr. Chips. 
<laughs> For me, it's the person, the one that I, I think I tweeted it recently. Well, I guess it was on granddad's birthday with uh, Joanna and mom and granddad. It's, it's one of only two pictures that I know of, of with me, of uh, where me with granddad. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was going to say the same one, the goodbye. The straw. Mr. Yeah. Chip. The straw hat one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Mr. Yeah. Chips thing. Right, yeah. exactly. Yeah, Mr. Chips. And speaking of which, I actually have a letter from, I think it was a letter from Mel Blank relating to the Mr. Chips event or something like that. I have some weird letter that references, um, yeah, from Mel Blank that references the Mr. Chips. But yeah, it's one of only two pictures that I know of where um, where Granddad and I are in the same photo. And and um, there's one other also with Joanna. Um, so those would be my favorites. Wonderful. Fantastic. Um, this actually... Um might be right up your wheelhouse, Robert. Um, has there been, this is from SCRA. Um, has there been any newly undiscovered material uh, appearing out there? Because we all know you're a bit of a Benny collector and gathering all of the memorabilia up in the world um, and thwarting my plans to collect it, dang it. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, like if you, you, unearthed a letter last year like a or so you had some stories about nasa last year but i'm wondering have you discovered anything new in that time i don't think so I, i'm trying to think i mean there was some stuff that came up with the um the mel blanks estate auction um oh, right there was some stuff that came out of that and i think that was within the last year I, though maybe that was more than a year ago i don't remember um, and I did pick that. That's I got one of the the money. I got the money clip that uh, the granddad gave to Mel. So I have that. I have that money clip out of that auction um, as well. And I got something else out of that one. But otherwise, I can't think of anything else that's come up. Um, but you're right. I, I do pay attention to to the auction houses, and I do do regular searches. And and if I see anything that's um, that's particularly interesting, um, yeah, I usually usually go ahead and, and get it. So you can bid against Laura. <laughs> you know, we, yes we, we got into a bidding war and did not know it until afterwards that, um, that is true that has um, happened yeah yeah they get in they get into a bidding war and then i go to vegas and lay odds on whichever one's gonna get it so <laughs> yeah well there's um, some of these things that i just feel like should really be in the family and in some cases you know if i find the right opportunity i might either donate or, or loan it to you know to the to the right place but you know, a good example of that is, you know, is that um, the funeral book, you know, I, it, thank you. I was it, it made me freaking bananas to learn that the right that that book, the funeral book wasn't even in the family anymore. It, it had just gone to somebody to somebody to somebody. And I had to spend a fortune at an auction to get that damn thing. I think it got stolen. I think well, there are things that, that were stolen, like uh, the Nixon letter, for example. Yeah. Let you you all explain what the Nixon letter is. I don't know the Nixon letter. The Nixon letter was a letter written to Miss Mary after Granddad died. It was uh, a, a letter of condolence that was on Nixon's personal uh, stationary. stationary. I, I can't remember if it was White House stationary or not. It may have been. But uh, it was signed by him, and it was quite valuable because... Uh, he would have been the sitting president, or he would have no, just had been impeached. Was it was 74. When was he impeached? I think it was 74. If I yeah, remember. I think so. It was August, August 74. August. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so, so it was. Bored. It was just before. So he was impeached just before granddad died. Uh, but he wrote a letter of condolence and. At some point, years after the fact, it came up for auction. Uh, somebody who we don't know who was selling this letter at auction, mom found out about it, or maybe George Zachary, the trustee, found out about it. And there was a bunch of, there were a lot of legal letters going back and forth about who owned it, how they'd gotten it, what the provenance was. Um, and uh, it was, as far as I can tell from all the, letters that I saw that went back and forth. Uh, Mom never did get it back. And mm -hmm. I don't have any idea where, where it is now or what happened to it. But the supposition was that it had been stolen when uh, moms had put stuff in storage after she burned her house down. That could be. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know that, that part of the story. I, I have heard mention of that letter. I, so I'd heard about that, but I didn't know that it had been stolen. And so I guess nobody knows where it is at this point or... 
Um, if you want to stand by, uh, our lovely Garth has dropped a little copy of the letter in here so that people can get a reference point for it. Yeah, I'll just look up on screen. Yep, just give me one second here. That's just so interesting that like that it just that that this embittered legal battle to to cover the to cover the whereabouts and the re return of the letter like that's that's eternally fascinating. Oh, actually, um, I just remembered another detail, which is the person who had it offered to sell it to mom for like five thousand dollars, and uh, she declined the offer. Well, that's oh, I, there. It is. Yeah. Oh well. That's pretty okay, cool. Can we make we it go. bigger? Because like it's, or is there a way that I can make that my whole? Yeah, story? I think if if there you go. There we there go. There we go. Yeah. Oh wow! Look at that. Give everybody a chance to read it. There's also, by the way, a photo uh, that surfaced after Mom died of Granddad playing the piano with. I'm sorry, Granddad playing the violin with Nixon playing the piano. I saw that yes. online. Somebody, somebody, I saw that on the somewhere on the web. Somebody posted that somewhere. Uh, is Patrick on the call? Um, don't know. Hmm. I'm I'm having a little trouble reading it. Uh, dear Mary, I just learned on he's, the news tonight. His writing yeah, is uh, is better than uh, JFK's. Yeah. Well, I've got the, the, the Kennedy, yeah, the Kennedy letter is right there, right there behind me. And that is, that's some tough reading. Yeah. Um, it, it was one of the, uh, I think that Patrick scanned this um, and it would have been in one of the files, Bobby and Joanna and Michael, that I uploaded um, onto the web for you guys to be able to download, in, in, including the photo of, uh, Granddad with Nixon playing the piano, as well as photos of Granddad with Truman playing the piano. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. those are great. All right, Laura, do you want to read it? Oh, sure. Um, dear Mary, I just learned on the news tonight that Jack had died with cancer. My great regret is that I did not even know he was ill. I would have never otherwise missed the chance to say a few words to him before the end you can take comfort in the fact that he was a great star who made millions happy and that he loved you. And that's very, all I can say. Very much, sincerely, yeah. Richard Nixon. That is pretty awesome. That's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby, you have to go find that. Yeah, right, well, I mean, if it comes uh, yeah. Better yet, find out how it ended up in somebody's, some random person's possession. Yeah, no um, kidding, right? Yep. The funeral book, I actually was approached by somebody, by a guy who supposedly had lived in the Playboy Mansion that's across the street. Yeah. Um, uh, and that somehow he had come into possession of it. So I don't know if, I don't know, you know, I'd just be guessing at it. Um, and that he had offered it to me, and then I had um, approached your mom about it, and she just gave me the flat answer: there was no funeral book. Yeah, um, it's like oh, <laughs> okay, it's a fake, you know. And I just and he was like, all right, you know, and and it went away and it came around again. But you but, know, it wasn't a fake. Yeah, well, it's now it's definitely now not a fake. fake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Pardon. Yeah, there's no way there's no way it's a fake. No, I mean I, I looked at it and uh my friend Anna signed it and Hannah signed it. I mean, people whose writing I know and yeah. people I know signed it and I recognize their handwriting. So it's absolutely not a fake. I don't mm -hmm. think we saw it because we went in sort of through the side, you mm -hmm. know, as family. So we never did go in the front of the temple or the funeral home or whatever at you know. To yeah. Side. Side. Yeah, the memorial chapel or whatever they yeah. call it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, you know, I remember talking with your mom about um, Hillside and she, she was your mom, you know, she's like, no, I never go. You know, it doesn't do anything for me. Um, 
And uh, well, Michael, I know that you were at um, the Pennies for Benny that we did a few years back. And actually, Zach just uh, was at Hillside about a week ago, um, happened to be in L.A. and so went over there. Yeah, um, I, I I literally zoomed down from uh, from Santa Ana Airport up to Hillside and I didn't know where I was going. Um, and um, but thankfully, Jolson led the way yeah. and um, <laughs> <That's been too. laughs> things huge. And um, he walked up there um, and it took me a minute to find his, the hall, exact hall. Um, and when I got there. Um, my plan was just to put one of my hats right there, take a little photo and just kind of let it sit there for a second. But somebody had already put something down there and there was a copy of Jack Benny on DVD from TV Guide, which I first didn't realize that TV Guide was distributing episodes. Um, but uh, it was interesting to be like, wow, this was already here when I got here. Somebody must have been anticipating the birthday or may have put, there, put it there on the 26th of December. Um, but it's, it was just a very, it's a very nice, uh, quiet setting. He's right across from Eddie Cantor and Ida Cantor, um, and, uh, Irene Selznick. Um, and then not too far away from, um, Jack just across, um, uh, in one of the mausoleum or the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. And one of the other sections up against the wall is Jack's writer, Al Gordon. Um, uh, so that was, um. It was a very interesting moment to kind of like, because like a week prior to that, I went to Waukegan. So like within the trip, I went to the birth and then the final resting place. So it was, it's quite a sight. It's it's a wonderful place to just kind of walk around for 90 minutes listening to your father's shows, hands down. Um, I, love, I love seeing those posts. Yeah, thanks for thanks for putting those pictures up on Twitter. I, I love seeing that stuff. Yeah. I go to every year on his birthday. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I. It was, it's, it, I, I'm glad I did it, like, regardless of the lack of sleep, because I basically did a 24-hour turnaround, <laughs> went back to the airport the next morning, but it was worth the trip, um, hands down. Um, and in Waukegan, he is still fondly remembered. In fact, we, my, my girlfriend and I went to the, uh, the Genesee Theater as our last stop before we went back into Deerfield, and we, we wanted to go inside to just take a picture, and there was a show going on, so they wouldn't let us do it. And uh, fortunately, um, one of us had to use the restroom, so that was our entryway in. And then sure enough, they said, well, if you want a minute, we'll take you into the Jack Benny Lounge. And, you're, and your grandfather is lovingly represented not just as a nice portrait on the wall in a sketch, but a premiere of Man About Town, which is a very lovely sight. So he's, he's still loved. And there's graffiti on a wall with him next to Ray Bradbury, which is awesome. <laughs> um, if I uh, could bring us back to the questions, though, um, I have a couple more here. Rachel wants to know, what's your favorite memory with your grandfather? I have so many memories. I don't think I have a favorite one. The, the My favorite one. one for you is the violin in the shower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, yeah that's an old story. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not my favorite moment. That was one of the most... Memorable. That's one of the ones I talk about the most. Yeah, maybe the least. Seeing with them is always memorable. It was always it was always a good time. Though I did get annoyed sometimes when I was with him. He people would be constantly asking for autographs. He'd always be stopping to sign autographs, and you never get anything accomplished. Couldn't get you finished doing it right. Couldn't you couldn't see the next movie or whatever because people are always asking for autographs. He always stop and sign the autographs too. I actually that probably my maybe not my fondest, but one of my strongest memories. Uh, is going to the ice capades with him. Yeah. Michael, were you were you with us? I was there. I was there. I, I remember going to the ice capades. Well, a couple times we went to the ice capades. Uh, well, mom apparently talked granddad into going, not realizing, granddad didn't realize that mom had essentially wangled free tickets in exchange for having granddad do an interview with somebody. And <clears throat> granddad found out about it in the limousine on the way there. And it's the only time ever that I ever saw him angry. He was really, really angry that mom had put him in this position. But then we saw after the first half at the intermission, I got up and went to the bathroom. And when I came back, I literally couldn't get back to my seat because he was surrounded by such a mob of people that wanted autographs that I literally could not get back to where we were sitting. <laughs> That's good. 
I remember for me, it was it, it would be uh, the baseball games that stand out. I loved baseball. Granddad would go regularly to Dodger Stadium. He would take me these to sometimes. And, and the, uh, they had it on the big board. Happy birthday, Bobby. It, the, one of them was, a, that's right, Joanna. One of them was a birthday party. Um, but there were yeah, a bunch of games. And and I was I was nerdy enough to do that thing where you keep score, right? Every single hit, every single, you know, at bat, you, you're writing down information about it. And, and I would bring my mitt hoping to catch a ball, never did. Um, but I, but I was kind of I was a little bit of a baseball nerd for a few years in there and uh, and so going with granddad to baseball games. I would go with him all the time back when Walter O'Malley, um, right? Was well, his the, seats were right next to sit, and sit with sit in the dugout with all the baseball players. Yeah, I, I remember from Walter O'Malley's box. Right, I remember doing that one time, and, and his seats were right next to the owner's box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think any um, any time that we went out in public with him and saw him signing autographs or people approaching or, you know, going in the back door to a restaurant that everybody else goes in the front door, you know, things like that just were like, when, like Maria was saying earlier, you know, the difference between granddad and Jack Benny. So like we'd go over to their house and he was granddad, but if we went, if we were out in public, you would notice, okay, he's, he's famous. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. and we used to love, he used to take us to Toy Mart and, yeah. uh, you know, they used to, all the people that worked there, you know, would fawn over him and say like, oh, he's, he's spending money. Look, he's not so cheap. You know, he's <laughs> buying them toys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Things like that. You know, I've, I've heard stories of him standing in line, you know, for whatever, just, just being a regular guy. And then having somebody notice him, it's like, oh, Mr. Benny, you know, please come, you know, come on over here for, you know, whatever. And uh, were any of you an audience for moments like that? I remember several, several times that happened. Like mm -hmm. one of getting in line to movie, see movie. It was, yeah. and I didn't even remember the name of the movie. It was the Hellstrom Chronicles. It was this movie about insects, about how insects were going to take over the world. And I remember my grandfather hated it. <laughs> I didn't like it. He, like insects, but he, had, he was always upset about he meant to tell you spent that money go, go to the movie. But he was in line and they moved, moved up to the head of the line and then he realized who he was. <laughs> I, I don't remember anything like that though. I'm just looking back at the Q Q and A. Um can so, here's an interesting one. Can someone say a few words about Mr. Benny's Jewish faith or share something about his beliefs, Ray God and religion? Mm. That's interesting because I never remember him. Um, he was Jewish, of course, but I never remember him going to a temple or doing anything particularly Jewish. And neither did neither did I. We didn't go. To, I didn't go to temple. I wasn't bar mitzvah. I didn't go to Sunday school. And I so I, he never really talked about religion. Yeah, and they always had a Christmas tree, and so did yeah. mom. You know, like we always grew up with. You know, you bought Michael. You used to put lights up on the house. Put the, yeah, Michael put the lights up. <laughs> oh my god! Last name like yeah. Rudolph. We sort of have to. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah i don't remember any um i don't remember any judaism growing up yeah. in fact i remember when i remember when um the first time mom met brad my husband and we had been dating in college and he came to beverly hills and met her for the first time and she said she like pulled me aside and she said is he jewish <laughs> and I said, I don't know, Brad, are you Jewish? <laughs> Turns out he's Jewish. <laughs> and, and was actually bar mitzvah. And, and was actually bar mitzvah. He's actually Jewish. Yes. Actually, uh -huh. his, his, you know, his, his muscle he knows how to speak Yiddish. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yes. That's, that's pretty darn good in this day and age. I so. know. I know. Yeah, and of course, growing up in Beverly Hills, like all of our friends were Jewish and they actually did go to temple and whatnot. So for me, Saturdays were about the most boring day ever because we weren't we were going to temple, but all our friends, there's nothing to do yeah. on a Saturday. And we went to so many bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs yeah, when no, we were right. in seventh and eighth grade, but we didn't yeah. have them. Our, you know, we didn't have any. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, some uh, I had seen um, a question in here. I'm not seeing it now um, that. Uh, yeah, Maria. Go ahead. I just I had I had muted it because I had turned my heater on because I'm freezing. But so I I was mute when I was going to say this. Michael, you're wrong. We did go to Saturday school for several weeks. Several on, weeks, yeah, not very long. Remember that. 
No, because our our paternal grandparents were right. uh, practicing right. Jews. They right. weren't kosher, but yeah. yeah, but they. Uh, so I did, I learned some Yiddish from them. It was mostly things like "you're naughty," um, <laughs> Michigana and Michigas. But uh, mom, so mom allowed us to go. I'm sure at the urging of our grandparents. And then at some point after several weeks, she said, so are you guys liking it? We both said, no. And she said, okay, you don't have to go anymore. So that was our exposure to Judaism. And then in mom's book, for those of you who have read it, uh, she said something about having taught us about religion when we were young. And I remember reading it and thinking, I, I missed that. So I asked her about it and she said, well, I taught you Christmas carols. <laughs> yeah. that, that was her explanation of uh, how she had given us a religious education was teaching us Christmas carols. Yep. So yeah, not, not very practicing. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, one other question, as a college student uh, from Camden, uh, as a college student, not many folks I know are Benny buffs, were a lot of the kids you knew growing up uh, Jack Benny fans? If so, were they envious that uh, Benny was your grandfather? Yes, growing up back then, yes. Nowadays, most of my friends don't even know who he is. Right. Mm -hmm. But back then, yeah, people were very envious. I remember I went to, to prep school in New, New York and in prep school, I was the big star because I was, one, he was my grandfather and two, I lived in Hollywood and three, I knew, they always asked me, have you ever seen the Beverly Hillbillies house? That was the first <laughs> so, question everyone always asked, do you, do you ever seen the Beverly Hillbillies house? Mm -hmm. It's funny. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I, I did have a, a question. Um, I just wanted to know, do you have like a favorite episode special or like favorite guest star that you remember um have any particular memory with that as being your favorite my favorite episode is the one my mother's on that's a great one this is a bad actress um yeah that's and also the one marilyn monroe is my second favorite i think i see <laughs> you have the marilyn monroe in the corner there so yeah yeah, yeah that's a great that's a great one as well For yeah older. Uh -huh. I would say for, for me, it, it, there are particular characters that I just, just really loved. You know, I think probably as a very, very young, and I, when I was writing that little article, you know, I pointed out, I think that as a very young kid, Granddad didn't seem especially funny, but the show itself, of course, was funny. And, and for me, people like Frank Nelson, you know, Mel Blanc, of course, Rochester, you know, those are the characters that to me were just, a, were, were so funny. And so any, any episode that really features any of them heavily, especially when Frank Nelson comes on, I, it just, to this day, it still kills me. I love it. Excellent. All right. Well, we do have uh, one more minute before the top of the hour. Any parting comments from anyone or introductory comments or, since we're right at the start of the convention? <laughs> Well, I, I want to thank thank you guys all for yeah. you know, keeping his memory alive, and Laura in particular for just like being amazing to us and the family. And um, yeah, I don't thanks, know. This thanks is, for this you is, all for being amazing it, to me. I mean, it's a treat. Gosh, it, yeah, know. it's a real treat to to do this every year. Well, this is our second year, so we could say every year now. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just saw one quick question about whether any of us carry on any of the Kabelski traditions. And from my perspective, the answer is no. I don't know what, a, what are Kabelski what are tradition traditions. I, I don't know, but somebody asked the question. <laughs> are there any, like, what about or just even family, you know, like things from mom? Are there any things that you think that we picked up from mom that you still carry on doing? Me? Yeah. Us? You or Michael or. <laughs> See, uh, Christmas girl is a Christmas sign. Do you? Yep. Do you? That's awesome. Okay, I didn't know. Say that again, Michael. Seeing a Christmas girl is a Christmas time. Oh, nice. And decorating your house. Decorating the house. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, religious training right there. So. 
we 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 occasionally you know walk through the house singing we sail the ocean blue you know like <laughs> things like that i'm wearing one of our sweaters oh yeah you like oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're like hey these the, are rug. Me. <laughs> the rug ah the rug my <laughs> You know, yeah, sitting on it right now. Every celebrity walked on that rug. That was an amazing. Yeah. Rug. Did you bring that up, Joanna? I did not bring it up. Maria just said the oh, word. Oh no, no, I said. No, I, I said Laura brought it up. Rug. Oh, Laura said it. Laura, <laughs> no, it's all my fault. No, I, I was right wondering now. who got the rug because I I wasn't sure who who did. So yeah. I, well, I'm just, speaking of, speaking of things like that, you know, the the desk. Um, and there's a great photo of I think Joanna, you sent me a photo of Granddad working next to that that desk that I used to have. And um, I, it's now in Caleb's room, my youngest son. It's in his room. And, and I got to tell you that when I see him sitting at that desk doing his homework, there, there's a strong sense of nostalgia because you think back, his great grandfather would have worked at that desk, you know, looking at scripts or reviewing, you know, whatever. Um, I, I, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Fabulous, wonderful way to kick it off. So much appreciate all your time and participation, sharing your memories uh, of your granddad. Oh, oh, oh there it is. Yeah. That's yeah. a great there photo. There it is, yeah. That is, that is a really great photo, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Michael, you were so cute. <laughs> that's not Michael, that's me. Today, except for the beard. <laughs> Thank okay. You. Well